let's talk about the coding challenge what we got today guys so this is react beginner right five random questions taken from the training backlog if it's the first time you deal with it you know what you do what you need to do next right go through the training module react beginner and check all the questions in speaking the top left is the easiest one the bottom right is the most difficult one so try to follow a sequential order more or less so question number one we got let's try to understand that syntax it takes a while to get used to it so what we do here is look first of all we are sort of compiling a react component and then we can check properties methods and stuff like that right so our component if we are passing a first name and a last name of a given user or person we should display welcome mr last name yeah however if we only facilitate the first name in the particular case we say welcome first name yeah we need if else we need some basic logic on the right hand side thankfully we don't have to write everything by ourselves because the component is partially created by the way you see something called props yeah if i'm correct yesterday gray talked about components on monday he'll be talking about props that's the way we can pass data from one component to the other so that props component sorry that props object have one or two properties right the first name and maybe the last name so if if we have last name we want to display welcome what mr props the last name will it work no why not ah. so react loves curly braces yeah so if we don't put the curly braces it will be read as it is welcome mr props dot last name we don't want that right? we want to interpolate to interpolate props dot last name the way we can interpolate that as you mentioned is by introducing curly braces so with curly braces we can access any javascript we can write any javascript here right so props dot last name and if not if we don't have any last name welcome what props dot last name yeah first name correct see if you're paying attention right props of first name all right so anything else or will that be yes perfect what do you think i'm going to play a bit with this example because i think we can optimize it quite a bit but for now let's see if it works right that's the first thing if we test it will we get confetti yes confetti right any elegance warning no so yeah okay that's an absolutely valid answer if i had to review that code if that was part of a pull request you'll see shortly starting from task number 13 i think or 14 how to do a pull request how to send your code to be evaluated by any of your colleagues i may complain about a couple of things first of all first of all uh okay if else yeah fair enough it's very academic very educational but in real life we don't really use it in some cases we use it but when we need to do something very simplistic, we don't use it. We use the ternary. Have you heard about the ternary operator? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the ternary is something like, so that structure, I'll leave it there. So I'm going to write the same code using a ternary operator. Return, oops, return, props of last name, then question mark. Yeah, you see the question mark is if that's true, return what? That. Else. You see the colon? Else, return that. These two blocks are equivalent. These three lines are is the same as these three lines. Eh? Which one do you prefer? Again, this is very personal. This is very personal. Say so again? Two one. Yeah. I mean, in that particular case, I agree with you, Max. I think that one, the structure is so simple. When it's if else, return if something, return something. Else, return something else ternary works really well if that becomes more complicated if else if else if else, 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 else at some point the structure about will become unreadable yes yeah? so there are no strict rules about when to use one or when to use the other that depends on your you know appetite okay but in that particular case i believe that that structure is slightly easier first of all let's see if it works once again yeah if it doesn't work then we need to go back to it yes it does work cool fantastic but now i'm going to show you something very sexy about very very modern javascript yeah these things that 
because of a reason some developers tend to ignore, especially junior developers coming from boot camps. So whenever you get that structure, props or an object, and then you want to access particular properties of that object, we can do something very sexy called object destructuring. Object destructuring. This is very new in JavaScript. So with object destructuring, we can do that. Look, curly braces, and then I can directly, correct, I can directly pass with comma separated list of the properties of the object. So how does it work? That will, that will check, okay, out of the object I'm receiving, give me the property props.firstName and save it into a variable called first name. And the second one, give me the value of props.lastName and save it into a new variable called last name. Why this is so convenient? Look, you see that? Gone. Yeah, the code is simpler. Eventually, typing props dot, props, dot, props dot 20 times is very exhausting. It goes against readability. Now I can focus on the data. Last name, first name. I don't care about props. Dot. Yeah? So that's, I believe, a really good way to improve the readability of your snippets. And still works, of course, right? Any questions? So even though um, the one that doesn't have the last name is being passed in destructed. Yeah. No, no, that's a good question, Sarah. So if we don't have any last name, can anyone tell me the value of the last name property? Undefined. Yeah. In JavaScript, when something doesn't exist, we refer to it as undefined. Yeah. But that's fine. Undefined is a valid value in JavaScript. Yeah, undefined. So that's, that's all good. Sorry, I, I just had a quick question about that as well. Um, what's the difference between undefined and null? Oh, that's a good question as well. That's a good question. So they are very similar in many different aspects. They evaluate as falsy. So if you do if undefined, false. If nil, false. Same as an empty string. If empty string, false. We'll talk about that in the future, right? The main difference is undefined is something that hasn't been defined at all. It doesn't exist. But nil, it's something that you explicitly set to nil. Yeah? I want the value to be nil. You put the value explicit. Yeah? Again, in real life, 90% of the time, you can exchange them. But there are some subtle but very, 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 very important differences. We'll see that in the future. Yeah? Anything else? No? Let me have a look to your code. So what we got today, question number one. All right, so... I think sometimes we, it's, it's a really valuable exercise to look at code that doesn't work. That's the way you, we can learn a lot, right? So for Damiano, why it didn't work? He had two problems, first of all, first of all. You see, he's interpolating the first expression, but that doesn't really make sense unless you use the curly braces. Yeah, don't forget, without the curly braces, you are not doing JavaScript, you are doing React and HTML. So in a, that will display literally curly brace, welcome, blah, welcome, blah, blah, dollar. It will display a dollar on the screen, right? So that's why it doesn't work. And also, of course, on the else statement, we are missing welcome props dot first name. What else? For Sarah. Yeah, so this is the canonical solution, right? So nothing to talk about it. Uh, same thing for Nico. I mean, the, the exercise was half done, so it's very difficult to do something exotic. Mm, that's interesting. I like that. Let's just talk about John's approach. So he has removed the curly braces on the else statement. What do you think about that? You can. Yeah, of course you can. Look, it's green, right? It works. It's work. To me, I will personally not recommend that. Why? The curly braces are necessary if you have at least two statements. If you have one, maybe you have another one. If you have two, you need the curly braces to set up the scope of your if statement. If you have only one statement, and this is a good example, curly braces are optional. The problem is, if you don't put the curly braces and you forgot about it, and then you add a second command, it won't, it won't work. It won't work. Because again, without curly braces, it only takes the first command. 
So to me personally, yes, to avoid problems, I would suggest to keep the curly braces always on. But again, very personal. And also I think it helps on readability. Look, for instance, with CAM, you see, if else, they are aligned. If else, I can quickly compare them. With Yom, it's a slightly more difficult. Slightly, eh? slightly, slightly. Cool. Same thing for Nico and for Monica, the same thing as well. Everyone pretty much is the same thing, right? There is nothing exotic, I believe, here. That's pretty cool. Everyone dropping semicolons, not sure if they were part of the exercises as well or not. What else? Same for Muntahin, for Gideon. Hmm, again, Steffi, she had the very same problem as Damiano, you see? That doesn't apply here. I understand that's a bit confusing at the beginning. But remember, unless you are using curly braces, you are doing HTML. Yes, yeah, so if you do HTML, that won't really work because you are not interpolating any JavaScript. Any question, guys? Exercise number one? No? Cool. So let's go to question number two. Let's see what we got here. I think there are a couple of very easy questions, and that's, well, that's rel relatively easy. So look, we are expected here to create a precedent component. Uh, again, we receive a couple of properties, first and last name. Yeah? So it's pretty similar in that respect. However, this is the key for the success. We need to understand that syntax. So look, the way we work is go to the root of my component and find, try to give me an element, what the dot means, do you remember? Class. class name, correct. So find an element with class name, first name. And dot text means give me the value of that element. Yeah? So the value should be first name, colon, space, bill. And likewise, find another element with class name, last name, and give me the value. Should be Clinton. Yeah? Obviously, the value will depend on the input. If we pass bill, will display bill. If we pass Boris, will display Boris. I think that's pretty obvious. Yeah, again, Gray will talk about that on Monday morning. So, we have two elements. Could be, could be dips, could be labels. It's not specified, you see? It's an element with class name, first name. Let's use, I don't know, we can use a div, we can use a label, doesn't matter. So let's use a label, for instance. Label, class name equals first name. Yeah, let me close the label. And then what do we put here? First, what's the first name? First name, yeah, first name. You see, I'm not using any, any backticks here. I'm not using any backticks. I'll see what happens if I use the backticks in a minute. First name, then what? Props dot first name. Remember, guys, that this editor is the one you are using in Visual Studio Code. So you remember all the shortcuts we've been talking about these days? You can use them here, for instance. How if I want to copy the line? Boom, copy it, right? How I want to replace first name? Look, Command D or Control D, last name. It's pretty sexy, right? That's it. So I hope that's clear enough. Let's evaluate it. If it's okay, we'll improve it. Yeah, it's okay. All right, so what will I change here? First of all, first of all, again, the structuring, right? Can you tell me how to avoid typing props any single time? What we explained five minutes ago, what do we need to do? Curly braces. First name and last name, like that? Comma, like that, right? Something like that. And so then you have to always put the spaces between the start and the end. That's a, good, that's a good point. So these spaces are optional. That's about the styling guidelines. Yeah. According to the styling guidelines defined by Airbnb, you know that? Explain that? Yeah, we explained that, right? So Airbnb is one of the main actors when talking about the standards. So they recommend to put the spaces for readability reasons. Yeah? It's not the end of the world if you don't drop them, but again. Okay, so now we can get rid of props dot, right? So hopefully our code will become a bit easier to read. Again, let's see if it works. 
Cool, fantastic, it works. A bit laggy, but it works. Okay, so now I would like to improve it a bit. I didn't really like the indentation strategy. Why? Because you know when you open a tag, we explained that this morning, I like to close the tag at the same virtual line. I open a bit here, so I should close it, uh, but it doesn't work, right? So we need to add a space. I'm not sure if you're getting my point. So to me, that's more readable, but that's a bit weird because there are random spaces, so don't do that. The way to improve the readability of your code is, look, put a parenthesis, parenthesis never hurt, so just drop a parenthesis, close it at the end, and then look. To me, this is much more readable because you can clearly see where the div opens and where the div is closed, right? Does it make sense? Cool, again, let's see if it works. I have one additional proposal to improve it. Even though that's correct, there is a problem here. Why do we need that div? It feels like artificial to me, right? That parent wrapping tag feels a bit weird. Can we remove it? Let's try to remove it. Let's see what happened. Yeah? Look, straight away, you see, we've got some red text. So something is not right. Let's evaluate it. That won't work. And that won't work. Look at the error. Parsing error. JSX elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. Yeah? So that means that in React, because of the way React works, we need to have a root element. Yeah? It's the way React works. We need to get used to it. And, and, look at what the suggestion is. Did you want a JSX fragment? Look at how sexy this is. This is not HTML valid, so you cannot do that in HTML. But in React, in React, oops, you can do that. Oh, sorry. You can add an empty tag. It's not a div, it's not a label, something a bit artificial. Can anyone tell me the advantage of using an empty tag? Technically speaking, this is called a fragment in React. Is there any advantage of using a fragment versus a div? That's correct. That's correct, Sarah. If you put a div, you will have a div in your HTML, a div surrounding your, your labels. If you put a fragment, you won't have any parent div. You will have two labels. Visually speaking, there will be no impact. But the point is, if there is no impact, the simpler the better. What's the point of having a div in your markup that adds nothing, adds no value to your application? Don't forget something. Eventually, if you're working for a multi-billion app, they may have thousands of divs on the screen. And that has a lot of penalty on the performance. Yeah? That application will need a lot of memory of the user system. So thinking about performance, because the, the cost is nothing, let's try to minimize the number of divs we have on the screen. Yep. So let's run. Yeah, go for it. Why do you think, why in reality do we have to have the, those fragments at all? Like, why couldn't it just be, why does that have to have only a closing time? That's the way React works. It's just the way React works. We need, I mean, sometimes we need to take assumptions, right? React works in one way. We need to follow this pattern, right? There's nothing that we can do. Anything else, guys? Why is the function in blue? Why is the first the function in blue? No, the, the, in, where is this first name encoded or the last name encoded or the name encoded? Yeah, that. Why, why is it in blue? Ah, right. Yeah, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. That's a good question, actually. That's a really good question. That's a limitation of the online version of Visual Studio Code. Probably if you do that on desktop, it won't happen. On your, on your call flicks, that won't happen. But on the, on the online version, Visual Studio Code thinks we are trying to create a new component. You see? Component names are in blue. Oh, tur turquoise. No? How do you pronounce that? Turquoise. Whatever. It's light blue. Uh, that's why but ignore the color scheme, right? It's not perfect. Unfortunately, it's not supported yet. So it's a bit confusing. Anything else? No? Let's have a look to your code. So what you did here. 
question number two. All right, so, yeah, all good for Sarah. Interestingly enough, she's using double quotes. No, 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 wait, I, I never said I was wrong. That's just interesting, right? So, you know, in JavaScript, you can use single quotes or double quotes. That's up to you. Both are equally valid. That depends on your style. I personally prefer single quotes. Personally. And the reason is, the reason is, if I look at that call, fantastic. I got syntax highlighting, whatever. But if there is a bug in production, I need to check the logs or something, I cannot see if I got a double quote or two single quotes. Yeah? So just from a readability point of view, I prefer single quotes. However, I may be wrong here. I'm not 100% sure, but I have the impression, and actually we can check that now, Airbnb, GitHub, uh, React, Style Guide. I think they recommend double quotes. Uh, I would like to understand why. Again, I'm talking on top of my head, so that may not be completely correct. Uh, look, exactly. You see? Bad, single quotes. Good, double quotes. Why? Let me read that, because reverse uh, image reviews also typically use double quotes in sense figures. So, yes, I use mirror this convention. Okay, it's a reason, right? You can agree or not. It's a reason, yeah? Cool. What else? So for Nico, same thing. Oh, so I saw Cam, he finished the challenge very quickly, in like 15 minutes, but he got many elegance penalties. And I think that's a good example. You see, that's what I said before. But yeah, I like the idea, I like the intention, right? The intention of aligning your elements, I think is fantastic. However, ah, that's not the way we should do it. Remember, parentheses, and then in a new line, you can indent everything like here, right? Cool, what else? So for John, all good. All good for Chris, even though, even though, no, even though nothing. Sorry, ignore me. Hmm, interesting. Why didn't work for Simon? Can anyone see the problem? Last name? Class. Ah, the class name, correct, yeah? Class name is missing. It's okay to use paragraph, that's fine. But we're missing the, the last name. Uh, right, Sanjay. Can anyone see any elegance issues on Sanjay proposal? Correct. That requires a new indentation because this is part of the div, right? And likewise, that line should be indented to the right a bit. All good apart from that. All good for Max. For Josue. Same problem for Moon Time. So apart from the class, uh, he's missing the, the, the tag itself, right? A paragraph or a label or a div. Any warning for Gideon? Indentation. Yeah, the same thing. Indentation. But anyway, I love the way you hold the pot on table tennis, so it <laughs> doesn't matter. Right. And finally, it didn't work for Clarissa, so some elements are missing here, right? Cool. Anything else about question number two? No? Let's have a look to question number three. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing, right? Even easier. It's the same thing. So basketball star an element with class name first name with class name last name and then we don't even have any any properties right so this should be hard coded so that's a good gift for you guys halloween gift free sugar so div class name first name and then class name last name yeah any elegance warning Semicolon. In which line? Seven. That's correct, guys. Yeah. You see the way we structure the code. Parentheses, new line, 
your code perfectly indented and then close parenthesis semicolon that should be perfect i hope yeah that's it right so let's quickly check the the results i want to keep that short because i want to focus on the next questions i don't want to run out of time so all good for sarah for nico you know everyone right it's not it's almost impossible to do something wrong here or exotic at least good 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 who else clarissa yeah oh mm. interesting can anyone spot any elegance issue for clarissa Space. correct correct and i know some some developers argue these things right again nothing is right or wrong if you believe that you should surround the equal symbol on an html tag with the spaces at least you should be consistent so if you do that do it all the time if you are wrong you need to be consistently wrong because at least you, you can defend your theory right in that particular case the, there is no strategy it's just random right so yeah, again according to the react style guide you can see they don't have any spaces surrounding your html attributes cool question number four what we got here in that particular one hmm so we got a component called user and we receive a user property which is an object with name and age so then we need to find a property called detail with class name detail sorry and then there will be two elements with class name detail right you see details at zero means find me the first tag with class name detail and the text will be name colon space peter find the second element with class detail and the text should be h colon space 31. that's a bit more complicated if you had to create it from scratch but again the component is halfway through right so that's to simplify things a bit let's try to read it Props of user is an object, right? With name and age, I believe. Actually, it doesn't really matter what, which properties do we have. That should be dynamic. So we've got name and age, and on the second example, first name and last name. So regardless of what the properties we have, we're going to iterate. We're going to go through all these properties and display them. So object.keys, you will see that, I think, on the intermediate training. Object.keys will give you the keys, an array with the keys of the object. So for instance, if my object is name peter sex yes object let me create a variable name let user equals yeah so if i print object dot keys user what will it display guys name and sex but like what one string Array, okay. Array, and then what? Correct. Correct, because that's an array, as you will see. JavaScript is all about arrays. You will see, uh, once you start progressing on the training, on intermediate, but especially on expert, that regardless of what the problem is, you will most of the time transform the data into an array. Because arrays are the most powerful data structure in JavaScript. So if you have an array, you can iterate, you can reverse, you can convert, you can transform, you can do many things, right? And this is a good example. So you transform an object into an array of keys. And now let me change the question. What if I want to do the opposite? What if I want to display Peter, comma, yes? Which method do we need to bring here? Correct, Montaigne. Object dot values, yeah? object.keys and object.values even though that sounds pretty fundamental that was recently added to javascript so before that it was way more complicated to loop objects all right so here we have object.keys yes so we have an array with name and sex so give me the array and then map can anyone tell me what map is what map does 
Correct. Christian array. Correct. So map is arguably the most important array method in JavaScript. It's one of the, probably the most common one. So with map, you can transform an array into another array with the same size. Yeah. So for instance, imagine that you want to transform an array of name and sex, you want to capitalize, to convert to uppercases. So using map, you could do that. Yeah. So whenever you want to transform each value of an array into a new value, map is going to be your friend. And here, we use map, and for each key, name and sex, we want to display a div, yeah? because each key is a property. Div class name detail, and then key. So can you tell me in this particular example, what's the value of the first key? Name? No, not Peter. Not Peter, because we did object.keys. That means this is what we have. Name and sex. So the first key is Peter, which is correct, right? Oh, no, uh, sorry. It is, no, this is Peter. Sorry, I got confused now. No, no, no. Ignore me. The first value is name, because name is the key, right? We're using object.keys. The first value is name. Name, column, space. And now, that's the question. How do we take value associated to that key name. Um, props to the user. So props to the user, correct, John, will refer to that object, right? And now, and then what? Like that? No. Square brackets, fantastic, you've seen that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please do uh, beginner JavaScript third question. It's literally that example. That's the way in JavaScript you can access dynamic properties of an object. Yeah? So when you do that, it will essentially do the same as doing props.user.name. That would be equivalent. If key is name, yeah, that will be transformed into that structure. All right, anything else? Any warning, any? Um, I just had a quick question. Yep. Uh, so I've just tried to run uh, .map on a normal array. Yep. And uh, when I then try and log that array, it comes back uh, as an illegal return statement. So do you have to create it as a new, do you have to create a new variable when you want to map an array? No, no. So there is something subtle but important here. Let me cut that HTML. So when you have, a, when you use a map, generally speaking, you do that. Curly braces, then you can do whatever you want. You do blah, 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 I don't mind. You do a few things and eventually you have to remember to return something. Okay? That means that for each element of the array, you return something. For each element, you return something. Yeah? That's the way it works. That's the academic approach to map. However, what happens when we don't want to do anything? We just want to return something. You see, when you have that, when you return something straight away, there is a mechanism to simplify that a bit. You can get rid of the return statement. Yeah. And now be careful. If you have curly braces, you need to return something explicitly. But if you replace the curly braces with parentheses, whatever is inside of the parentheses will be immediately returned. Yeah? That's a bit more advanced. That's part of intermediate. Yeah? But if you are curious about it, if you struggle with map, just keep that in mind. Yeah? That if you use parentheses, I cannot create a variable here. I cannot do that. that that's, look, you see, it doesn't work. Because JavaScript is telling me, hey, 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 hey you are using parentheses. You need to return something immediately. You cannot do magic. You cannot, you cannot call any method. You cannot do anything. Right? Just return something. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's that's returning the value. Yeah. So can we use object values for this? Object of values. No. No. And I'm not going to tell you why. If you think we can use object of values. Try to repeat that exercise in the training and let me know what happened.
if you try to access the values here, you mean here, right? No. no, no. no. Here. here. Yeah, but okay. So what's your point? Object dot values of props dot user, and then what? Technically speaking, you can solve it because that's an array, so you can get the index, and but it's just way more complicated, right? So don't do it. Don't do it. Just something like that. How can you get rid of props? Once again, guys. Obvious structuring. How do we do that? And then what? Name. It's user, right? The variable is called user. So that's it. Even simpler, right? Easy peasy. All right, let's try that. Cool, fantastic. It works. Let me check your code. I don't want to run out of time. Um, so, yep, so I think everyone pretty much did the same thing, I believe, right? So it's all good for Sarah. Uh, yeah, what else? All good for Nico. Cam, John, Chris. Yeah, obviously, I mean, everyone uh, did pretty much the same thing, right? Nothing to, to discuss in particular in here. Any question, guys? No? Cool. Question number five. Ten minutes. That's a good one. That's a good one. So, look. How many attributes, how many properties our component receives? How many? One. one. It's only one. What type of data the argument is? It's an array. No, it's not an object. It's an array. You see? Square brackets. An array with a list of Formula One teams. And now let's read that. So we, the idea of the exercise is to create a component to reverse the starting grid. So whoever is first on the array, it will, be, it will start the race in last position, right? Whoever is last will start the race on first position. Does it make sense? Cool. So again, thankfully, the exercise is halfway through. We are already reversing the starting grid. We are doing a few things, right? And now, in here, we only have to type one line, I believe. So we need the position, and then we need the team, the name of the team. So how do we get the position of the team, guys? Index. index. Plus one. Oh, index or index plus one, and why? Correct. JavaScript starts from zero. Yeah? The first number, the first position of an array is not one, it's zero. That applies to everything with one exception. Months of the year. That's one of the oddities of JavaScript. Yeah? If you today is the first of November. So if you get the day index, it will return one. But in February. Yeah, the index of the month, no, not in February, sorry. In January, the index of the month of January is not one, it's zero. Yeah? It's one of the oddities of JavaScript. Things that used to happen in the past, where JavaScript was still a very simplistic language. And there weren't millions of developers like today paying attention to these things. Anyway, generally speaking, JavaScript is at zero. So, when you are participating in a race, you never say, I finish in position zero. It doesn't make sense. Say, I finish position one or first, right? Cool. So we got the position. Then we need to add a dot. Fair enough. Where I am. Where is my dot? Here we go. And then how do we display the name of the team? Team. Yes, team. Correct. With curly braces, right? because we have an array of strings. So look, once again, map will iterate over the array of strings. So if my array of strings is that, how many times my algorithm will stop on the map function? 
three times, that's correct. Yeah? Map doesn't filter, doesn't... It's just for each element, I receive Honda, I return something. I receive Yamaha, I return something. I receive Ducati, I return something. Yeah? Let's go through the list, input, output, input, output, input, output. Yeah, simple as that. All right, anything else? Any warning, any... No? Square bracket. Yes, uh, square bracket inside index. I'm not following. Uh, no, why? So team is a string, right? The first team will be Ferrari. The second team will be McLaren. The third team will be Williams, or on the other way around. So yeah, cool. Let's get rid of props once again, right? Remember, pull braces. Teams, get rid of props. Simplify things a bit. Let's see if it works. It does work. Is it perfect? Did we get any warning, guys? I'll give you a hint. What that means? Yes. So when it, whenever you use map in React, you are expected, and again, that, that's another oddity, but that's the way React works. You're expected to add a proper, an attribute called key equals whatever you want, something unique, something unique. And that's particularly important because if you don't do that, imagine that you have a button to shuffle the results. Without a key, React won't be able to determine the new position of the elements. So that's like the identifier that React needs. And now tell me, can you tell me any unique identifier here? Index. That's interesting. If I type index, it will work. It's a unique ID because index will be zero, one, and two. So the numbers are unique. However, is considered an anti-pattern to use the index as the ID. And the reason is, the reason is, the index should be deterministically associated to the element. If we suffer the results, whatever now is on index zero could be then index one or two. Won't work. The index needs to go alongside the element. So it doesn't work. It will work here with this functionality. But in the future, we may have problems. So give me another identifier. The team, yeah. teams are unique, the team names at least, yeah? somehow. Right, let's evaluate it. What happened with the warning? That's it, right? Cool, any questions? No? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Go for it. Just ask the next question. Sorry, oh, sorry, I think the audio quality is a bit terrible. Can you say it again? Um, so after ending, sorry, let, sorry gi gi give me a second. Let me disconnect the, the VPN and everything. Can you see the error? Uh, I think the stream has gone offline. Oh. oh wait. Yeah, so the problem is that the exercise, look, you're expected to add a dot. There is nothing, nothing exotic. This is not a wild card or a special character. It's because the exercise is asking us to put a dot after the number. Yeah? Oh, yeah? Uh, okay. <laughs> so it's a simple, yeah. yeah. We could have been using a hash or a parentheses. I don't know, right? But in that case, it's just a dot. Okay? Okay, yeah. Cool. Nice. So let me have a quick look to your solutions. So all good for Sarah. Did she get any warning, guys? Why? Correct. Key is missing. Yeah. Anything else? 
There is another warning. Correct. Indentation here is wrong. Yeah, that should be moved to the right. For Nico, key is missing. Yeah? Remember, guys, to add the key. For Cam, key is missing. The first one adding the key are going to add a positive point on the, on the system. For John, hey, we got the key. And that's the right key as a team. Cool. Point for you, John. Uh, cool. Chris, missing key and wrong indentation, right? For Simon, right indentation but missing key. And Sanjay, right indentation, missing key, missing key for Max. Also, any other warning for Max? Semicolon, no? Semicolon are right. You got it here. I'll give you a hint. The warning is here. I'll give you a hint. The warning is here. I'll give you a hint. The warning is here. Spaces. Yeah. We should have the space. You see? According to Airbnb guidelines. Yeah. Again, it's a minor thing. It's a minor thing. Cool. Indentation for Josue and also the key. And what else? And I think that's pretty much it, right? Cool. We are literally out of time. So anything else you want to talk about regarding the review? Any question, Clarissa, uh, Damiano? No, no one. No? Cool, fantastic. Thanks. So that was it, guys. Thank you.